It's helpful to understand the key Adobe Premiere Pro interface design elements, as this will make it easier to explore the application and learn new features. Let's begin by opening an existing project. I'm going to double click here on this 0102 interface overview project file and double clicking it is going to open the project in Premiere Pro. The first thing I'm going to do here is make sure I'm in the editing workspace. Now a workspace is really just a preset layout for the application. I'm going to move things around a little bit here. I've got a number of different panels that I can work with. I'm just going to shift these around in a really noticeable way so that it's easy for you to see the difference. And right at the top of the screen I've got this word editing which is the editing workspace. We've got a number of different workspaces for different purposes. Color, work, uh, effects, audio and so on. Now let's say I know that this workspace is wrong. I'm going to click on this menu right next to the word editing and I'm going to choose reset to saved layout. And that's going to put things back the way they were. I recommend that you go through this process at the beginning of every workflow that you follow, every tutorial that you watch, every book that you read on how to use Premiere Pro, because you'll find that pretty much all of the lessons that you see will use the default layout so that people can follow along. Now on the subject of panels, I want to draw your attention to this blue highlight outline. Right now the timeline panel is active. That's where you build sequences and make movies in Premiere Pro. Now if I click the bottom left, the project panel is active. Depending on the active panel, you'll find that you get different menu options and things will work a little bit differently in Premiere Pro. So it's important to know which panel is active before you begin. Just keep an eye out for that blue outline. Each panel has a name at the top of it. Right now I'm in the project panel. Next to the name you'll find a panel menu, just like the one we used a moment ago to reset our workspace. This menu is called the panel menu and it gives you options that relate specifically to that panel. It's important to be clear about which kind of menu you're looking in. Here I'm looking in the panel menu, but you'll notice, for example, on the timeline, there's a wrench icon for what's called a settings menu. In both cases, you're going to see options that relate specifically to the panel you're clicking on. Where you see the name of a panel, in this case the project panel, it's referred to as a tab. So here we've got the tab for the project panel, now I'm clicking on the tab for the media browser. Again, it's good to know the name of that because if you look up tutorials, you'll find that these different name headings are referred to as tabs, and now you'll know where you're looking. We also have a right-click menu. If I right-click on one of these items in the sequence over in the timeline panel, you can see I've got a number of options that relate specifically to that clip. And you might already be able to see that selection is extremely important in Premiere Pro. I'm getting options for that clip, not the one next to it. Every panel in Adobe Premiere Pro is listed in the window menu. So if you're ever hunting for a panel, don't worry about it. Just look for it on this menu and it'll come up when you select it. Here, for example, I'm choosing the media browser and now the media browser has come to the front. Even though it was kind of already displayed in the interface, it was hidden behind the project panel, which I'm going to go back to right now. So now I'm going to go to the file menu. I'm going to choose close project. And that's an overview of the key design elements in Adobe Premiere Pro.